keep focused on what you want out of it and don't worry about how much vanity or how much followers you've got how much engagement you're actually getting just keep posting because you know okay i want to connect with people so i'm going to keep posting and one day someone's going to see me i'm going to reply and i'm going to be part of the community because i keep posting like you have a voice you have a gift you have a talent just keep creating keep posting because the right person will see it and the right person is waiting for the time to give you that opportunity if you've been trying to keep up with social media lately you're certainly not alone Twitter becomes X and no one likes our updates anymore. Instagram's engagement plummets and then comes threads. Is that even worth the effort as the excitement seems to have completely fallen off a cliff? Now there's Blue Sky, Discord, what else? It's all proving to be a little overwhelming. Here to help us make sense of it all is Brian Hollingsworth, a brand consultant and graphic designer based in London who has become passionate about social media ever since he worked for the Conservative Party in 2018 and later a leading urban streetwear brand. Alongside running his own design studio called Dam, he's also behind the BKH, where he helps other creatives make the most of their online brand and reputation. We wanted to know whether social media is still worth the effort, tweeting or xing how we can stand out amongst the noise without burning ourselves out, and where we're best focusing our time and attention to get the best possible return. Brian, it's really nice to meet you. Thanks for joining us today on the podcast. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're you're somebody who knows only too well about the benefits of coming on to shows like this. 100%, 100%. It's that self-promotion, isn't it, that a lot of us creatives, like, we know we have to do it, but it's like, where do we start? Where do we find the time? I mean, as, as a starting point, if you're a kind of graphic designer or illustrator and you're wanting to sort of get your voice heard, how, how would you sort of go about, like, starting that? Oh, man. I think for the for where you start is that you actually have to kind of get over yourself first <laughs> like because uh, i think with, with a lot of us designers illustrators web designers wh- whatever kind of creative expression you have it's very difficult to put yourself in the light in the spotlight because we're usually just behind the computer hunched over in the dark because the lights have gone off and it's gone from morning to night and we've just been working for 12 hours and we're just behind the computer and we're sending the email like okay here's the work you know hit the deadline you're not really ever really seeing anybody. Do you know what I mean? Or really talking to people. You talk to your client or you talk to some project manager or whoever. So now to kind of put yourself in the spotlight, you're like, oh, you start telling you all these, saying all these things like, what if nobody cares? Nobody will care, but that's not the point. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what if nobody cares? What if nobody likes me? What if nobody replies back? All, all, the, all your worst fears will happen, but you have to kind of get over yourself like oh you know nobody likes me it's like yeah nobody will like you in the beginning but after a while they will so I think the first step um, that I would always suggest is like you've got to learn to get over yourself you've got to learn to say see the benefits rather than how scared you are um yeah and that will help you get over yourself I think that's great advice actually because I think that's what stops a lot of people from just doing anything like oh no I couldn't possibly do that what if what if people really kind of critique my work if I share it on LinkedIn? What if, what if what I tweet isn't the right tone? You know, and then that can just be that can just paralyze you doing anything really. And 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 especially like you know, what if I say the wrong thing? Because we've seen it since Twitter Twitter began. How many people have lost their jobs yes. to this day, like to this week? How many people have lost their jobs or been suspended or uh, under investigation simply because of a tweet or a yeah. picture or a statement or whatever it is? But I always say on the flip side, how many people have gotten jobs, gotten opportunities and made connections from a single tweet? Um, and I always say every time I'm doing a panel or doing a workshop or on a podcast, I'm like, the only reason I'm actually doing this thing is because somebody saw something I posted online. And yeah. they said, oh, I like, I like what he's saying. Has he got more to say? And then they asked me, and I was like, yeah, I've got more to say. <laughs> and then they invited me to, to do the thing. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, where, where, where do I know you from? Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. We met on Twitter. Or Twitter. X. We keep calling it Twitter. X. Oh, but God. Nah, I know. It's, 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 there's a lot Twitter. going on at the moment. It's it's too too much to keep up. But you you do. Well, this is the, this is the reason why I spotted you, because I'm busy you know, we're all busy 
And then I just started seeing these tweets coming up in my feed and they were from you and they were like, oh, guess what? Um, Threads now has this um, feature. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then you popped up again and it was like, oh, and now you can do this on Instagram. I was like, right, I'm following this guy. This guy's on the nose. He's really kind of like keeping up with all of these mass changes. Because I I used to be the same. I used to be young like you once, Brian, and (laughs) had some energy. (laughs) (laughs) Used to do the same thing. And now I follow you to sort of stay abreast of all the kind of like, you know, social media updates. And there is a lot. There is, there is, there is too much, in fact. Mm. So I I think for me, when it comes to like talking about social media updates and keeping relevant or keeping up to date. Um, There's so many people you can actually follow and there's a few people I follow. But one thing I found was that a lot of it was kind of irrelevant to most people. Mm. Like um, there's Matt Navarro, who's like the top kind of like social media. If you're a social media manager or you're in the space, you you would follow him for generally updates about every kind of thing. I know he's moved over from from X to Threads now. He's abandoned yeah. the platform. Um, but he just kind of covers kind of everything that's happening. And what I found following him was that I had to filter a lot of it out because I just mm-hmm. didn't think it was relevant for me. So I've been a social media manager and I've also been a content creator. But even then, all of his news weren't relevant to me. And I was and I was like, well, I don't want to kind of do what he does where he just posts everything for, about industry people and stuff like that. I'm like, I want to post stuff for people that are using the platform, the creators itself. So I kind of filter out and I kind of ask myself, is that useful information? Okay, if Threads has a new feature, that's useful because you can use that feature. If you're talking about government policy, about kids on the platform, maybe it's like, mm, that's, maybe that's not useful because as a creator, that doesn't affect you. So I kind of try to filter out what I think would be useful news and helpful to somebody's creative career. And I'd say, okay, well, did you know that this is happening on the platform or, you know, X is going to start charging a pound or a dollar a year. That that might affect you because you might not want to use the platform anymore. Or this new platform is does this and you can use that to promote this. Or now everyone's got links on Instagram stories or whatever the news is. I, I ask myself, is it relevant? Um, because one, again, it keeps me relevant. Again, like you said, it's like, oh, he knows what's happening. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Someone's <laughs> going to think, oh, uh, what's happening with uh, Instagram or Twitter or whatever, I'm, I'm going to go check Brian or I'll just ask him like, hey, how, what's, what's the deal with this? Do I need to care about it? And I'll be like, no, not really. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you know that I'm going to be relevant with the, with the news and it's well, also going to be useful to people. Exactly. So It's accessible. You make you make kind of like complicated, you know, what can often be, you know, overwhelming subject, yeah. very kind of easy to follow, which is great. And funny um, enough, I actually had a show about it as well. I actually had a video show on um, IGTV, actually, that that old thing. Uh, nice. It was during the pandemic, I actually, so all the, the little Twitter updates I give, I just had a 10-minute video show, um, and then when IGTV kind of went, when they killed it for reals, I kind of just stopped the show. Um, but I realised that I should have just done it on YouTube. Yes. And it, IG, IGTV died and killed the momentum. So I'm like, every, every, t- every like, so much, every couple months or something, I'm like, man, I should have, I should bring that show back or whatever, but... Finding the time. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Well, this is this is part of you um building your kind of personal brand, isn't it? Because you've like you said, you mentioned you've like you started off your career um obviously as a graphic designer because you studied at the University of the Arts London. Yeah. Um and then sort of ended up finding yourself delving into social media as well. So you've you've actually carved out a niche for yourself, which is I guess what you'd advise other creatives to do if they're trying to find a place for themselves online amongst yeah. all the noise amongst all the noise yeah. um yeah so with that it was just kind of it was kind of accidental um so I, it was about 2018 january which when i officially started saying i'm going to post online so about 2017 i was working with the conservative party um on the, I think it was the general election, actually. Yeah. Yeah. The general, I think it was for Theresa May, I believe. Um, yeah, right. the general election. And then I, that summer, I flew to Kenya to work on their general election. Um, wow. For Urutu Kenyatta, I believe, yeah. Um, my wife was six months pregnant at the time. Oh, my goodness. I flew, yeah, I flew for, there for two months. So I, I was due to come back like 10 days before my, my first son was born. So. And you made it. <laughs> but, yeah. But he was he was ten days late anyway, so he was waiting. For All me. right, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, it was it was it was a tur- turbulent year. So I was doing like print media for them, 
and a little bit of social media. And I was like, this is when social media was really picking up and people were using it as like a political tool, a branding tool and all these kind of things prior to just people just posting their dog and what food they're eating, right? It became <laughs> a, a tool for business and e e even politics. So yeah. I was doing a bit of that um, in Kenya and in um, England, in Westminster. And then I was like, okay, this is, this is really a, a, a place you can really post and connect and talk to people outside of just your friends, right? Because we had Facebook and that was just your friends. And yeah. then Instagram is like, well, it has the potential to go beyond your friends. So then I think it was about 2018, January. So my son was born in August. So obviously I had that whole paternal, <laughs> you know, period of- Very you know, difficult time. Being that, yeah, that six months. And it was January. I was like, you know what? I'm going to just post online and see what happens. And I just started talking about branding because- I did graphic design. So that's what I was like. Maybe I can find someone to talk to other than my now wife, you know, about branding. Cause she's just like, yeah, not in her head, but she don't really know <laughs> what I'm talking about. I'm just rambling. It's just words to her. So I'm like, let me go online and see if I can connect with some other people. It never really did happen. Cause naturally it was just my friends that were like, yeah, good post. And it was like, they didn't, didn't care either. Um, but then eventually I kind of started talking about social media. Cause I started working in social media. Mm. Um, so I kind of started talking more about social media and then people seem to like that. Like, yeah, okay. I like what you're saying about use, how to use the platforms, how to make certain content, how to make your content good. Um, you know, how to, how to represent yourself online, why, why you should post online. If anything, like what's, what's the reason about posting about online, um, posting about what you do online. So I think just from there, I started seeing the power of posting online and being able to connect with people and then just slowly but surely over the, over the last five five six years now people i've just connected with so much people and had yeah. so many opportunities simply from posting a tweet uh, instagram <laughs> picture just just Great, my thoughts it? on linkedin just whatever it is and i'm like even if you think no one is listening or liking the post or whatever Somebody somewhere is just waiting for that moment to be like, oh yeah, yeah, I've got something going on. I think you should get in on it. And it's like, forget, you know, somebody, you, you getting one like or six likes on a tweet or whatever, even though some of my tweets have zero likes. I don't care. Do you know what I mean? Because somebody somewhere has seen it. Maybe they didn't like it. Maybe they shared it with someone. Maybe they didn't. It doesn't matter. Maybe but they were busy. Maybe they were busy. Do you know what I mean? It, it doesn't really matter. So I think just the power of posting online and someone having an opportunity one day like it's happened for me. So I'm like, and it's, it keeps happening for me. And I yeah. keep seeing it happening for other people. All the people I've met in these like last five years is literally someone saying, oh yeah, yeah I know a guy, he talks about that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Put his name in the, in the pot, he'll do a workshop or whatever, or he'll come down and speak, or he'll be on the podcast, or he'll be on the article, whatever it is, is somebody saw my post somewhere and said, yeah. Yeah. He's he's still talking about it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's he's still great. talking about it. So So this is this is how the BKH came about. This yeah, is your personal yeah. personal brand and like helping others to create. Brand. And yeah. So the main thing, so and I've, it's changed over the years. Again, I started with branding. Then I was kind of like focusing on Instagram and I was like, yeah, Instagram is so great. Da, da, da. And then kind of Instagram was kind of going down a bit and people kind of oh, stopped yeah. using it and whatever. So now I was like, wow, if I stick to Instagram, I'm just it's just like the Titanic ship. I'm just going to kind of go down with it. <laughs> so I had, I kind of started um, broadening my horizons and saying, well, maybe I should be just a general content guy, how to make good content. Right. Yeah. And then I was like, mm, maybe I should help people navigate these platforms because during the pandemic and a little bit before that, there was just so many changes and shifts. It was very hard to keep up. Hence why I made, made the show. It was so hard to keep up. I was like, well, maybe I should help people keep up as well. And then I was like, you know what? I, I'm, I'm just going to focus on like personal branding because personal branding kind of incorporates those two elements as well. So my main yes. thing is like publishing online to kind of help your personal and professional goals. It's like, that's what I want to help people do. Help people publish online. And that means making good content and what content you should make. And it means um, navigating all these new platforms and all their new features and all their new policies and ways and all the things that they're changing every day. And, you know, this one's buying that platform and this platform's doing that or whatever. Um, so using myself as a, as a template for, look, you can get opportunities and you could, you could get, you can get paid if you want. You could be a speaker. You could do that many and many showing how many people have also used these platforms to do such a thing. Um, that's just my, that's just what I do now. So yeah. it's great. I, I think it's such a leveler social media because it kind of allows all of us to connect with whoever we want, like exactly. never before. 
when there's not these closed sort of special men's clubs in London exactly. where, you, you know, in. quite a few people <laughs> are excluded. And, yeah. and that's where the networking goes on. Now it's like, okay, I'm going to talk to so-and-so on Twitter, or I'm going to share something that they shared so I can maybe like get noticed and build a relationship with that person. Exactly. I mean, it's how I built Creative Boom. Just DMing people on Twitter, right? Just, just, <laughs> just saying. Yeah, just chatting yeah. and making friends. I mean, I, I, I don't know about you, but there was a time back in the day when I first started this thing that I would spend a ridiculous amount of time on Twitter and other platforms trying to sort of promote myself and my brand. I mean it would be two in the morning and my husband would be shouting down the stairs are you coming to bed and <laughs> i'd be like i'm just gonna send one more tweet yeah. um and burnout is is real in that case oh, it, can, yeah. it can be very overwhelming you think you've just got to do this one more thing and that was in the sort of 2000 that was in like 2009 2010 so yeah it's you've got to be careful haven't you it's a double-edged sword oh 100 percent um a funny thing, I'm just coming off burnout. <laughs> I'm just coming off. I haven't had burnout. Oh, I'm sorry. Last time I had burnout was like 2013, I believe, 2014. Right. What was What was the cause back then? Just oh, literally, doing too much? So just doing too much. So and it's the same thing I put in my mind um, from last year when I got burnout, just doing too much. Like you just do, you just get something new and you're like, you know what? I'm going to ride this till the wheels come off. And then the wheels come off and you're like, I need my wheels back. <laughs> yes. And you're like, I'm going to do all this stuff and I'm going to get rewarded. And the reward is that you nearly die. <laughs> like, it's not good. It's not, it's not good. good. It's the not good. You nearly die. Yeah. So this, so, so this was yeah. when you were sort of working in graphic design still and. Yeah. So back in the, when I first had the first burnout, I was, had my own studio, um, with a couple of friends, we, we just got together and said, oh, let's, let's make a business or whatever. So somebody was doing video, somebody was doing web. Um, right. we had like a couple of managers and I was just, I was literally just slept under my desk and oh, woke mate. up, went on top of the desk and started working. I was drinking like six coffees a day, eating noodles. It was hell. And Were you just with your I current could... partner when the, all this was going no, on? No, no, she, no Well, she would have told no. you off. I'm yeah, sure. yeah, exactly. <laughs> not coming home, sleeping under a desk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not good for you. It's not good. Yeah. So you can see how that kind of, and you think you're young, you've got energy. You can see how it just goes down, 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 downhill. Um, last year, so yeah, last year from about January, um, I, I got a new job. It was a social media job. Right. Um, social media manager and content creation for yes. a clothing brand. And I was right. like, you know what? I'm really gonna, I'm really gonna go hard. I'm really gonna show, you know, what I can do. I really want to use this as a, a, a platform and a place to show that I can really create and do, 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 do it. Impress, so yeah. Impress. So naturally, I'm going just so hard, and I'm trying to do my my BKH stuff on the side. I'm trying to have design clients on the side, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be three people, <laughs> three people, and then by August, I am so. Oh. tired yeah and I'm like oh I'm just telling myself oh I'm just tired I've got it was my son's birthday in August so we usually go on holiday Leo the lion trouble yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we usually go on, well this is our first holiday I think just after the coming out of the pandemic this is the mm-hmm. first going, first time going on holiday outside the country um so we're like oh let's go on, let's go on holiday I think we went to Malta and I'm like oh yeah I'll just go on holiday 10 days just rest and I'll be, be okay you'll be okay and I don't know if you know what it's like to go on holiday with kids or even your family. You don't get to rest. No, there is no. no closing your eyes on the beach because your kid might drown because <laughs> it's playing in the water. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So you Aww. don't really get to sunbathe or it's just like a normal, and you're even more vigilant because it's like you're not even in your own country. So it's like, who knows what's happening? <laughs> I don't know this yeah. place. There's pickpockets or whatever's happening or who knows what's going to happen down the road or whatever's going to happen. Do you know what I mean? So you're always like super vigilant because it's not like you're in London where you kind of trust, you, you kind of, yeah. you know, you get the vibe or whatever. It's not exactly but, the rest that you would hope for. So, so there was no rest or relaxation done on that holiday. So I come back and I'm like, damn, I'm, I'm still tired. Like, what's going on? So then mm. I don't I don't know where, I think it was on Twitter, actually. Somebody posted something saying there's this thing called the seven types of rests. Uh, forgive me, I can't remember the author's name, but it's a, it's a doctor. It's, it's a lady, it's a doctor. Mm. She wrote this book called The Seven Rests, I think. Um, and she's she goes, there's people often think, oh, I'm just going to need to get a good night's sleep or the weekend will fix me. No, that's physical rest. 
There's spiritual rest, mental rest, creative rest, um, physical rest, mental rest. It's just seven times. I can't remember all of them now, but you need to kind of cover. And I started doing some study and like, yo, okay. I got physical rest thinking that was going to fix me up. Maybe I need rest from people. Maybe I need rest from creating things constantly. Maybe I need rest from, you know, in the spiritual sense, maybe I need mental rest. It's not yeah. just sleep is not going to fix it. You know, and I started learning about all these different rests and I was like, okay, I need to kind of go through these rests and fix myself properly. And it literally took me from about August to this year, August, to actually feel like, okay, I'm back. And I knew I was back because I was bored. Whereas in that one <laughs> yeah. year, yeah, I got bored. And I was like, well, if I'm bored, that means I want to do something. Because in that one year period, I just lost the energy to just do anything. I was mm -hmm. taking my son late to school every day. Like I didn't have the energy to physically get up. Like oh. for a month straight, I took my son late to school. And I was like, oh man, this is not even on. Because I literally didn't physically have the energy. I went to work um, and I just didn't have the energy to do the work. <laughs> do you know oh what I mean? My like my, my energy. Um, anyway, and this I, was like I, the start I, of the... I understand. I've yeah. been there myself. But yeah. so, what was that? That was at the start of. So this was from about August last year to August this year. That was yeah. this whole thing was whole happening. Twelve so months. I, yeah. So I kind of and I knew every day I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get the energy, and it's like it's not that simple. Like you actually have to, if you're burnt out, you actually have to stop and start doing the work of like getting back to yourself and reclaiming your yourself back in all these like different sectors of rest. Because what yeah. you've actually done is actually you've actually ignored your own self and your own health in all mm. these different sections like spiritually physically creatively and you're just running on fumes you're like yes. you're, you're, your tank is on e and you're like the wheels are falling off the, the you know the fumes are coming out the bonnet and you're like no this is okay like I, I still got more in me and it's like what you really need to do you need to get yourself checked do you know what i mean and it's like you don't need to push yourself that hard and no. it was a valuable lesson because the company i was working for the management was it wasn't just very good. It was actually quite terrible. Um, so it was a small company, but they had some big things going on. Like they had um, uh, retail, um, big retail orders, but there was only like four of us. So it was a small company, um, but we were all doing like two, three jobs each. So the yeah. whole team is just burning out. Um, oh, the whole team is just burning out and we weren't being rewarded for it. There was no bonus. There was no pay increase. We all asked for a pay increase. And all we were met with was a review saying that we're not, none of us are working hard enough for oh, pay increase and he wants to see that's not good for the morale production. and it's not good no, so I what just... ended up happening is i had a meeting and i was like yo he's saying and i asked him for a pay rise in a previous meeting and he had a new meeting with me it was like oh you know your your productivity has kind of gone down we're not seeing as much work as we, we have i'm like well i just already did the work i'm just burnt out from the work and he's like well and I'm, and I'm like, oh, you're trying to play me because you're trying to say that because a, a month earlier I asked for a pay rise. Anyway, after that meeting, I ended up just leaving because I'm like, I'm clearly not going to get the rewards I deserve or anybody in this company from working hard. So I just mm. left the company. It Two months later, he made everyone redundant. Oh, and there's man. only four of us. So there's only yeah. like one person working there now. So it's they like... They were clearly struggling behind the scenes anyway. So the, the thing is, it's like, you're burning your... People are burning themselves out and I burnt myself out for, for something that you think you're going to get rewarded for mm. and you don't because there is no reward for overworking yourself. There comes a point, doesn't there? And this isn't the case with every place people work yeah. at where you think, hang on a minute, I'm breaking my, myself for this person to make profits. Yeah. And why am I doing that? Why can't I just go off and yeah. start my own business? And then if I do put in the hard work and slog, I get rewarded I get for rewarded. it. Yeah. But um, I know it doesn't always work out that way, but um, I found the name of that lady, by the way. It's, um, oh, yeah. I think it's Dr. Dalton Smith. That's it. Yeah. That's it. I'm going to look into yeah. that. That's Fantastic interesting. Book, yeah. And I think people, if, 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 if few people have written a loads of, loads of articles about it. So you wouldn't necessarily have to read the whole book, but mm. there was definitely some extensive art. Cause I think she herself has written an article about it as well. So um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, definitely look into that. It's, it's great. I think um, burnout is is definitely something a lot of people have suffered from in the last month. I think we're still all just getting over the impact of the pandemic and the the fact that so many creatives out there had to keep running. I mean, mm -hmm. freelancers <laughs> barely got any support from the government. They just had to crack on and yeah. didn't then get any rest and nobody went on holiday for however many years it was. So it's no wonder so many people are feeling 
exhausted this year. Utterly exhausted. And the last thing we want to worry about, um, Brian, is um, creating content and putting it on oh. social media. So it's like, because that's that runs a risk as well, doesn't it? Of Oh, that's another <sighs> job that we have to deal with. There's but this is where you come in. This is where you help yeah. because you help everyone to kind of focus rather than try and sort of spin all the plates at once. Yeah. And this is the thing every time I, like, I consult with people or what I try to portray in my content is like content isn't easy. It's like a, it's a, it's like a five man's job. It's like a five. It's, it's ridiculous. It's like when I was working um, at the Conservative Party, there was like four of us on a team. I wow. was like making the graphics and, and um, video, video graphics. Yeah. Another guy was making um, video and a little bit of graphics. There was a guy that was just shooting video. There was a guy that was doing all the um, ads. And there was one guy just managing the platforms. He didn't make anything. He just managed the comments and posting schedules and coming up with ideas and stuff like that. And then That's we had an overall manager. Yeah. So when I'm now when I'm going, going to work in this clothing company and it's just me, you wonder why I'm getting burnt out because yeah um, you're doing the job before people, people doing the job before people and you don't understand a lot, a lot of people a lot of businesses as well don't understand that content creation and content uh management are two different things you mm. have to create the content but you also have to manage it you yeah. know what i mean and that's getting assets posting commenting all that kind of stuff creation in itself is a whole separate thing like oh, someone gosh. to do video graphics and that's not Brand that's management. not in everyone's scope. Brand management. Do you know what I mean? That's not in everyone's scope. Text, tweets, and covering all the formats. It's like, no, one person can't do all of that. Graphics I, and video are completely two different things. <laughs> they really are. And how do you do that when you are a freelance graphic designer and you're running your own little studio? <laughs> and you're like, I mean, well, we, what's laugh. The point of, we, we laugh, but it's like, and it's, you probably tell yourself, like, what's the point of even posting? Because... Yeah. I get my work through word of mouth or I get it from an agent. So if I'm Mm -hmm. posting online, who's that really for? And I think what a lot of graphic designers um, I've seen, the good ones that keep posting, it's really just to connect with the community. Um, And I think, first of all, if you're going to post online, you have to kind of ask yourself, what the hell am I actually posting for? Am I posting for money? Am I posting for reputation? Am I posting for community? So not everything's about money or like, you know, building reputation or getting more work. Because for the most part, as a graphic designer, you can't really get any work posting on twitter or instagram there's no. no business looking for a graphic designer on instagram or twitter it's just it's just, it's just never worked probably, I don't think it's it probably ever very rare Pro- very probably, rare probably indeed. very very rare maybe a friend will be like oh yeah i know somebody or whatever but for the most part it's somebody giving you a call saying oh, we've got some work for, or an email saying we've got some yeah. work for you so it's I your think network for, it's your network but i think for the most part if you are going to in any profession if you're going to post it's one reputation and two am i joining a community of other pe- people that do what I do. So I, yes. I, like my whole life, I've never really known any web designers. Since posting online, I met a few, do you know what I mean? But again, because we're hunched over in our computer, you, we're not going out where we're, we're, we're not going out people. It's a community. You know I mean? yeah. yeah. So you can go online and you can join a discord or you can join a Twitter um, and you, or Facebook group. Um, I know loads of, loads of designers are loads of Facebook groups or even LinkedIn. And you can just literally connect with people I mean, I think that's what a lot of people miss when they're like, oh, I can't bother to post content. Sometimes your comments are content. So yeah. you replying to somebody else's work or somebody else's tweet or, or thoughts is also content because it's content that you're putting up there and it's content that they're also replying to. So it's not yeah. necessarily about running your business online. It's about adding yourself to a community and adding yourself in the conversation. There yeah. are some people that they're not really that great at what they do, but because they're so involved in a community, everybody knows them. Mm-hmm. Um, so you don't necessarily have to be like posting your work if you're, if you're too scared to post your work. You can just comment on other people's work and or comment on other people's um, problems that they have. And you're like, oh, I've got the solution to that. Or oh, I can help you with that. Or we can figure that out together. So I think for the most part, it's like you need to un- ask yourself, what, what, what do I want my reputation to be? What do I want to build? What do I want to do online? It doesn't necessarily have to be like, oh, I want to make... I want to make a career online um, mm-hmm. because often, more often than not, that that's hard to do and it doesn't really happen. It's hard um, to do these days. Yeah, yeah. It's, it might have been easier back in the day when it was all new and shiny and the algorithms worked in our yeah. favour. And, and there was only 10, 10 people from each <laughs> niche online, like literally yes. only, only like five people reviewed tech or like two people were like surfers or like mm-hmm. people that love animals or people that kind of painted or reviewed books. There was like five of these people. So they had all the followers and had all the attention. Now every niche has like hundreds of people 
And most of them are doing the same thing. But I, back in the day, there was like one personal trainer online. Now it's like everybody's going to the gym recording themselves. It's it's re- the one thing that does annoy me is that um, people of my age have got bigger followings because we all benefited from the, those early days. Haven't um, yeah, yeah. Whereas people who are just going on these platforms now really struggle because they they don't get the same traction we enjoyed. So that's unfair. It's unfair. But one thing I would say is. There's pros and cons. Like, I do think the platforms are much better than they used to be. I know it's hard to say because there's just so, there's just too much going on. And I I know even the head of Instagram was like, Instagram is too busy. There's too much stuff in the app. It's too much stuff to do. Um, And I I think they know that. Even even YouTube, there's a lot going on in there. There's there's live, there's shorts, there's videos. You can even um, rent movies on there now. It's a lot going on. Like, I saw you can book a cinema ticket on Facebook. It's just ridiculous to me. They've got the whole marketplace. (laughs) It's like, what the hell is this? So much going on. But at the same time, because you have all these different sections in the app, you can grow in one section. um, Sometimes, not all the time, but you can just use i know some people that don't post in their feed they only use stories in instagram i know some people that just go live all the time like on twitch i know some people that just um post reels and short form videos and and just some people go crazy on tiktok the best thing about it is that you have different formats that if you could find your format like some people just do carousels you know what i mean and it works for them whereas back in the day all you could do was just post that picture all yeah. you could do was post that six second vine or whatever it is, right? All you could do was do that tweet. But now you can write tweets. Vines, with... oh my God. I'd completely forgotten <laughs> about back. those. I sometimes watch those on YouTube, just, you know, the, the funny co- collection. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, uh, you know, oh. Now you can, you know, yeah, now Twitter is 25,000 characters if you pay nine pounds a month. Oh, but yeah. you don't have to, but you know, burst a vein in your head trying to distill what you're trying to say into 140 <laughs> characters. You know I don't I mean? want to or... burst a vein. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that Musk is trialing, um, charging every single Twitter user in, I think it's in the Philippines and possibly New Zealand, like $1 yeah, per the account? New users, yeah. The new uh, users. Do you know what? I don't really of like what he's this. done to Twitter. <laughs> really? Really? I don't really like, yeah, I tweeted about it yesterday. I don't really like what he's done to Twitter, but... Not 100%, but I slightly agree with what he's doing there. Yeah. Um, and I would pay because if, if I was a new user, I would pay. I pay I pay uh, monthly for Twitter. I can't believe I'm even saying that out loud. It's crazy. Oh, no, but, I do as well. <laughs> I, I, I try it out. I think I think it's run out now because I think I cancelled yeah. it, but I'll probably go back on it. I don't I mind because like, these, things, these things are really expensive to run. And do you know what it is? I was like, I'm going to try it for a month. Mm-hmm. If it's terrible, I'll just stop paying. But sure. it's been four months, five months since I've been paying for it. And I'm like, you know what? It's actually quite useful, I hate to say. It's actually quite useful. <laughs> I th- and I think if you are <laughs> if you are a professional user of Twitter and you get something out of Twitter, yeah. I actually suggest you, you just try. Because, you, again, it's, it's nine bucks. If you don't like it, just stop paying. Yeah, um, exactly. But I think if you're a professional user of Twitter and you want to get something out of the platform, absolutely pay. If you're just a casual user, you just talk to your friends, you talk jibber-jabber, you want to see some viral tweets and laugh or whatever, then there's no point in paying. Um, what, it's, it's um, just just, just kind of like LinkedIn. There's no point in paying yeah, if you're just a casual user. Exactly, but, exactly. At least there's a the choice there. But um, yeah. were, you, were, you, uh, you, were you there that day going crazy like me um, on threads and seeing what it was all about? Or did no, you just you know. kind of... I, I signed up. Um, yeah. yeah. I was there for like... Do you know what? I, I think, yeah, I signed up. I don't think I was on it because I was just like... I, I, every time I opened it, I was like, these people are just copying their tweets over. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, people are just copying their tweets over. And I was like, well, I don't, I'm already on Twitter. So there's no... Why am I going to well. threads to see the same stuff? Isn't it interesting what's happened since? Every, it's all gone very quiet it's on there. It's all gone very, very quiet. And I, there's a few reasons for that because it's like Instagram people know Twitter exists. And if they wanted to be on Twitter, they would have been on Twitter. Yeah. But also in saying that, I think it's good that if they miss the Twitter boat or Twitter is just too toxic for them now, they have an opportunity to have something like Twitter that's not as toxic and they, they're able to kind of build on it. But, not but they're just taking all our scratch. data. They're, they're, oh, they're, yeah. They're, they're listening to us. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's the price we're paying to promote ourselves for free, I guess, which well, means nothing is free. So. It is that. But one of the ironies of, of all of that was that people were so critical of Musk, but then were quite happy to jump into bed with Meta again. Um, and when it sort of transpired all these things on the 
app store that, that they were yeah. having access to. And then also <laughs> yeah, nice. now you've got threads. If you want to delete threads, then I'm yeah. sorry, but you also delete Instagram. Everybody was like outraged, but no, we still hate Twitter, but it's the okay with is, Meta. <laughs> the thing is, <laughs> the thing is I, online, one thing I've noticed is that people don't care as much as they say they do. Mm. People, there's always a topic of the week or 48 hours. It's like, oh, they're just, I, I, I call it now. I'm like, oh, they'll be talking about this for five days and they'll be on to the next one. Or they'll be yeah. talking about this for 24 hours and they'll be on to the next one. It's like, mm, just got to wait for it to blow over. It's just, yes. it's just, the hot, it's just hot news. It's just, it's just like the BBC news. They talk about something for one week and the next week is like the thing never existed. It's just, yeah. it's just a news cycle. It's just a hype cycle. So it's like yeah. yesterday's paper. Exactly. Yesterday's news is a bit of toilet paper it's toilet paper exactly <laughs> so um i think just 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 most things that most people don't care as much as they say they do oh yeah yeah, yeah. but if you really cared you'll just shut everything down and i know people have just completely abandoned facebook i know people have just completely come off um oh, yeah. instagram and they had thirty thousand followers they yeah. had communities on facebook and they're like nope not having it that's so. interesting. I saw a really funny picture somebody made and it was it was quite quite rude. This poor old like elderly woman with her kind of, you know, walking frame and younger people helping her along and somebody had put a speech bubble caption on saying, "Come here, old Twitter user. Come on to Threads <laughs> where you have no followers." And I just howled because that's very much been the case for me. I've gone yeah. from like, you know, having a really good following on Twitter and then going on Threads and it's just like awful and I'm like, "Ooh. Oh. I don't I don't like yeah. this. F this funny is, enough. This is bad." I I tweeted. I said, "If you think you're talking to yourself on Twitter, <laughs> Try threads. <laughs> Try threads. Because <laughs> sometimes it's you get no true. replies on Twitter, but you go on threads, man, tumbleweed. And I these know. are your followers imported from Instagram. <laughs> People have I followed know. you automatically. And it's like, nobody cares. It's funny enough, on threads, yeah, I don't actually talk about anything personal brand or anything like that. Mm. I talk about movies and films that I watch. And oh, like, interesting. Um, shows. Yeah, the reason being is because I, because I saw everybody reposting their tweets. I'm like, why am I just going to copy and paste the tweet? That, yeah, I just don't that's do a good that. shout, actually. I just, I just don't do that. And it's like, well, I'm not going to post what I already post on Instagram because it's on Instagram. So if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen it on Instagram. I'm like, I'm going to take this opportunity to talk about something that I actually like to talk about, but I have nowhere to talk about it. Mm. And that is like, oh, I've just watched this series. I give it a three out of five or because like, I really like sci-fi. And I'm like, oh, I want to talk about that. So I'm like, let me just talk about that. I don't care if no one... That's a really good point, actually, because like yeah. often we're told, OK, so you've got a case study. You've just finished a project for a client and you've then got all these vehicles, the vehicles being the different social media. And you want to yeah. get that message across to the destination, which is your target market. Yeah. So if that is yep. the purpose of you sharing your stuff anyway, self-promotion. And usually we're told just do that distribute. and distribute it. And, mm -hmm. and whilst that's good, actually coming at it from a different angle looking at each individual platform in its sort of entirety how can I sort of instead of doing all that how can I make each bit of my content or what I share different that would work well with that platform that's a really good point I've never and, never really thought of it like that before and this is where it becomes a job <laughs> this yes. is where it becomes a job because you think oh I'm just going to it's not like distribution in a, in a supermarket where it's like oh okay I'm gonna if I'm selling butter Artly Butterly, I'm going to put Artly Butterly in Tesco, I'm going to put it in Sainsbury's Local, I'm going to put it in Asda, and it's just the same butter. But yeah. actually, if you go to Poundland, you won't get the same Artly Butterly. You might get it 50 grams <laughs> less <laughs> or uh, more water in it because it's the Poundland version and they need to cut costs because they're trying to sell it to you for a pound, right? So even there, there's some slight differences. Or you might go to, so I've got a Tesco Local and I've got a Sains, no, Tesco Express and a Sainsbury's Local. Mm -hmm. And I might go to Tesco and be like, what, eggs is... 180, this is crazy. I'm, I just walk over to Sainsbury's local and eggs will be 150. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm, getting the, I'm saving myself 30p for six seconds of walking. And it's the same thing that you do with platforms. Distribution is key, but only if there's slight differences because each platform has its own cultural nuances. So I don't want... Uh, most people follow you on multiple platforms. The people I follow on Twitter, I probably likely follow them on um, Instagram. I likely follow them on even YouTube maybe or TikTok. If I go on Instagram and I see you post your video, I'm like, ah, great, da 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 da, blah, 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 woozy woo, leave a comment. And I open threads or I open Twitter and I open TikTok and I see the same video, 
I'm not going to comment again. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that's comment a good again. point. I've just seen this this video. So what what I would say is you have to understand, and this is what I try to help people do as well, understand the cultural nuances of each platform. So that might mean copy and paste sometimes. That might just mean using the same video. It might just work. That's completely fine. I'm not saying totally, totally rule that out. But what you need to do is might be able to, because when Twitter was 140 or 280 characters, you had to maybe chop something down. Do you know what I mean? Make it a bit more witty or make it a bit more nuanced or make it a bit more rude nowadays. Everyone's just rude. All the, all the brands on Twitter <laughs> seem to be rude. Ryanair is completely rude and I just find it super hilarious. But they're yeah. rude because they're on Twitter. That is the culture of Twitter. You would never see them posting that on um, Instagram because Instagram is not a rude place. Do you know what I mean? And Threads is not a rude place. They've, they've actively said we don't want to make it rude. Um, but Ryanair on TikTok they got these funny video memes where they'll be like, oh, you're not saying this, we're a rubbish airline, but you'll be back next month. And I'm like, oh my God, that's so self-aware and funny and rude. But they, they never post that on Twitter. Now, granted, they've probably got a team of people and you are just one person. But I would say, that's why I always say, like, don't give yourself too much. You don't have to be everywhere. Focus on two platforms, maybe three max, if you've got that kind of work ethic and time. But most creators are part-time. They've got, we've got full-time jobs. Um, so we don't have that much time. But I would say focus on two maybe three platforms and figure out the cultural nuances of those platforms and trim down the video to, you know, maybe put the 30 second video on Instagram, but you put the three second funny part on Twitter or the longer part on um, TikTok or a different version of it on YouTube shorts or wherever, wherever you want to grow, whatever it is. But you can't copy your tweets to threads because Twitter is rude and threads is super friendly because everyone on Instagram is super friendly and fake and oh, look where I am type of thing. <laughs> so I would say, yes, distribute, but distribute understanding the cultural nuances of the platform and the yeah. people and how they react on that platform. Um, you can be friendly on one, but you, and, and, and this is why you've noticed no one's ever rude on LinkedIn. You know why? Because we're all using our real names and we yes. all know where you work. So if you're rude or if you're, you're, you're awful to someone or you say something off key, you you definitely get in fight. <laughs> you de you definitely be pulled into HR. Here's the thing: a lot of people probably don't realise if if somebody applies for a job, I wouldn't be surprised if the employer goes immediately onto oh, they those. Do. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, if your if your there's, Twitter there's feed is full it. of hate and ranting and rudeness, as you say, it's not yeah. gonna you know do them any favours, is Maybe, it? But this and this is why I'm this is why I'm so adamant about talking about what you actually know and yeah. not getting involved in anything. I have a mate of mine and he says he has these golden rules every time he does a consultation. He tells these, he tells his clients, don't talk about race, gender, politics, religion, et, stuff that just has like nothing to do with you, money, yeah. whatever it is, don't get involved in conversations that you have to apologize for or you have no understanding of or anything. A lot of these conversations look fun and they look funny. Don't get caught in no. the whirlpool of these conversations. It's the way I was brought up. I'm sure it was the same for if, you. Yeah, don't talk about politics, don't, don't talk about religion, don't talk about money. But generally, just don't talk about stuff you don't know. And yeah. especially if you have like a personal brand. I'm not saying don't talk about stuff you're not passionate about. Please, if you're passionate about a cause or something that's happening, please, mm. please talk about it. But sure. I mean, just generally every day there's a topic that people want to drag you into. <laughs> and it's just you like the news. Every to. week there's a new thing that they want me to talk about. Oh, this is happening here, that's happening there. And it's like, you don't have to, because if you, you realise you just be thrown side to side like you're in a in a, in a, yeah. in a, in a sea. Do you know what I mean? Like being thrown side to side by the tide. And it's like, just keep talking about what you know you know and keep talking mm -hmm. about that thing because that's where your opportunities are going to come from. Your yeah. opportunities are not going to come from talking about everything that everybody else is talking about. Yeah, there's no um, duty so there. keep straight. There's, there's keep no duty. straight. So... You don't, you don't have to feel bad if you don't get involved in these things because once you start talking yeah. about one thing, you've got to talk about everything, the right? Thing. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And also, like, you know, don't be too hard on yourself because, like, we've got enough on our plates. We really oh. have. And I do wonder if, like, getting involved in all of that information and all of that conversation all at once and all these platforms, I do wonder if it impacts our mental health. And you're talking about that. I, my social media cuts off like it locked my phone locks it from 10 p.m to 9 a.m mm. um yeah you can override it but every time i you know you just have it picking up your phone and i see that it's like it's blacked out it's locked off i'm like okay yeah cool i'm not supposed to be on it um yeah i've have I'm, I'm tempted to do it from nine to nine but i'm like you know what 
10 is usually the kind of wind down time when I'm watching something on TV or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and I started doing that again in, in, in reaction to the burnout I had because I realized I was just consuming too much nonsense. Yes. Just all the time, all the way up until 1 a.m. No. And it's just like, you gotta, you gotta like, and it's just like, you're not viewing anything. It's just, you're not actually, <laughs> it's like eating sweets. Like you eat the whole packet of Haribo, you're like, I didn't, you're sick. I, I didn't eat anything. Like it's just nothing, there's no nutrients. I'm just on it because it's just habitual. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I'm like, well, if I lock it, you know, uh, uh, I can't open it. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, all th- your phone has it. Um, if you've got Android or whether you've got an uh, Apple phone, you can lock lock the things called downtime. And also all the social media apps have it. They can pop up and say, oh, your time limit, because you set it to three hours a day. Yeah. Your time limit of three hours a day on this app has has come up. Yes, you can override it. But if you know you want to stop, you'll be like, you know what? Fair point. I'm finished for the day. I'm not actually doing anything on the day. There's, there's, I can, it can wait tomorrow. There's nothing can happening wait. here. The world so, can wait. You know, just, I like to encourage people to, to to kind of do that for their apps as well. Yeah, because it's just too much, it's way too much. Things. And it can it can get overwhelming. And like what what you said before about you know choosing two or three platforms and focusing yeah. only on that, and then also determining why you're using these things. What is it because you're trying to build your personal brand? Is it because you're trying to find a community to share tips with and get ideas and bounce bounce exactly. ideas off? Or is it what was the other point? It was you know whether you kind of want to stay informed. Um, you know just go back to that anchor it's like you're 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 on a ship in choppy waters and it's never going to be an easy easy ride get distracted yeah very much so it's very easy and even funny enough even with the the stuff that the platform is doing itself even with the Mm. new formats you know instagram has had like five new formats oh it's like stories now and then oh you gotta go live (laughs) or you gotta do igtv oh no wait 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 stop igtv it's actually reels no wait it's actually carousels i know a guy he's got about three hundred thousand followers on um yeah, on um, TikTok, Instagram. Is it? Oh, Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, his name's uh, Lucas O'Keefe. He talks about Instagram only. He oh, he he only does carousels and like pictures, and he's wow. grown exponentially through that. And he's he's like every time I do a reel, it never really works. Like it never, like I the, the engagement isn't really there. So he's just stuck to his carousels, and he's not ugly. He's a handsome guy. Like so it's nothing to do with his looks. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> he he knows how to speak well and everything. So it's, the videos aren't bad, you know. But yeah. he's just like, the carousels, my audience just likes carousels. They really work for me. So I'm, I'll just keep doing that. And every now and then he pops up with the reels. But usually a lot of people would tell you, oh, you've got to do the reels. You've got to get the reach of reels. You got, just yeah. how you're going to grow. That's how you're going to get engagement. And it's like, stop telling people this because it's just not true. It's you know not I mean? true. It's not and it's true. always it's changing. Not, it's always changing. It's just not true. So I think sometimes like you should, people should know their strengths and just mm-hmm. stick to those strengths because that's what you can do really, really, really well. Yes. Um, and don't get distracted by conversations that are happening that you shouldn't involve yourself in or formats that everyone's doing. Like when Reels started, I was like, I'm not doing any Reels. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> why would I do that? And the reason why I said that is because I said, if I'm going to do the effort of creating video, Instagram is not the best video platform. The best video platform is YouTube. So if I'm Mm -hmm. going to put effort into creating video, the smart thing to do would be to go on YouTube because I've never heard of an Instagram millionaire, but guess what I've heard of? A YouTube millionaire. Exactly. So again, you have to know which platforms are for which. Twitter is for connectivity and like distribution and reach, reaching people that you should never be able to reach. Um, TikTok for virality, not really for community. People don't know who they're following on TikTok, but you watch kind of raw videos and um, educational conversational videos on there. YouTube is definitely for money. YouTube is definitely for building a business. Many, many people have built business on the back of YouTube. And I would say a place like Instagram is for great for branding because you've just got all the formats. You can go live, you can do carousels, you can have a shop, you can do stories, you can chat in DMs, you can create a community, you can do (laughs) subscription. Like it's just endless stuff on Instagram. So it's really great to a great place to show off your brand and show off what you can do. Um, so I think having that fundamental understanding of the platforms and what you want to do on those platforms mm. really helps you focus and really helps you build whatever it is you want to build and connect with who you ever want, whoever you want to connect with. But you it's just have to kind of have point. that at the forefront of your mind. Like, Absolutely. what am I doing here? It's, it's about creating your own content as well, isn't it? I always thought like having your own blog and having your own YouTube channel would be a, a really good place to start because then yeah. you can then distribute 
the content that you make on those platforms to everything else. So Twitter and TikTok and Instagram. This is what I call, well, this is what is called like deep content. I call it dinner content. I just mm. mean my own terms. But the reason why I say dinner content is because dinner is usually a large meal. You sit down and it, it takes you a minute. You, you, you eat it slowly. Usually we rush our breakfast because we're off to work. Usually we have a sandwich for lunch because we're going back to work. But dinner's like, nope, I'm going to sit down. Nice I'm going to watch my show or we're going to sit at the table. We're going to relax. I'm going to have as much food as I can. I'm going to have my, my, my fancy beverage. I might have a dessert after. And we're going to, it's going to take a while to eat. You know, and I might get more or I might have leftovers for tomorrow, whatever it is. And that's what YouTube, podcasts, blogs and emails are this is rich deep dinner content content that if someone should find it they need to sink their teeth into it i've watched two hour videos on youtube and i don't watch it all at the same time I might, if i'm working if i'm working a long shift i'll put it on in the background could be a review of like Dragon Ball Z which I'm just I love Dragon Ball Z it could be a review of Dragon Ball Z <laughs> um, it could be a podcast about business or creativity or an interview or whatever I love um, Colin and Samir they have like two hour podcasts and I just put it on and I watch it you're never going to catch anybody watching two hour podcasts on Twitter no, or of Instagram not. or nothing like that but some people have three, four, five hour podcasts on Spotify. Um, some emails take five, 10, 15 minutes to read. Um, some yeah. blogs take 30 minutes to read. You might have to come back. You might want to take notes. You might want to print out or highlight or whatever, right? And I think all that deep content is far better for loyalty, connectivity, um, and community than any of the short form stuff. The short form stuff has us on a hamster wheel. And that's why a lot of people are getting burned out because we're like, oh, I need to create a six second video and another one and another one and another one. But we're sitting here having an hour long conversation that multiple people can, can grab multiple points from. And if we wanted to turn, you know, 120 minutes of this into two minutes each for yeah. everywhere or sound bites, or whatever, we can just distribute that onto different platforms of what we think the cultural nuances of each platform would, would uh, appreciate. But we have the rich content, we have the dinner content, right? You can cut it up and you can share it, you know what I mean? Or whatever it is. And that's the whole point of having like deep content. And that's why I always break say bread. like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why I always tell people, get off the hamster wheel of Twitter because they go in a second. Get off the hamster wheel of reels and even shorts. And even shorts are like, oh, you can link to your longer videos because they know that's where the meat is. That's where you get the ads, you know what I mean? So get off the hamster wheel of these short videos and start making deeper, richer dinner content where people can sink mm. their teeth into. Um, and the rest then falls into place, doesn't it? Exactly. There's, there's a guy, um, I love his books. I'm just going to look at my bookshelf. Daniel Priestley. He oh, says, yes. yeah, he, he got this book called Key Person of Influence. He says... Um, people should have you should have seven hours of content so when someone finds you you should be able to have they should be able to find seven hours of content that they can consume of you and then they will become a fan of you after about seven hours so they did some studies or whatever and it's like you can't get seven hours of content on instagram <laughs> no. but you can get seven hours of content from your podcast from a blog from an email and from yeah. youtube right and you're Easily. gonna you're, you're gonna do your own podcast as well aren't you brian yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I, I would say it here. I would do my own podcast. Yeah. So anybody who wants to, <laughs> wants to get on, get on, get on me. Yeah, so, well, you said you're going to do your own podcast. All right. I, I, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll say yeah. it. I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> you can hold me to it. Um, Not that you haven't got enough on your plate. <laughs> I'm, 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 I've been on many other, I've got about seven hours of content on other people's podcasts. I know, I saw. But not my own. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I saw, and that's, you know, I didn't sort of go through seven hours of it, but I definitely, yeah. you know, followed you from, from that content. Um, it does help that, that video you have yourself that you link from your profile on your, um, social bios, where oh, yeah. there's like a video of you talking about personal branding, you oh. know, that, oh, that yeah, is, yeah, 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 yeah. everybody should do that. If, 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 do if that. people are wondering, you know, if, Twitter, if, if, yeah, yeah. If work is slow, then this is something people can think about doing, can't they? Whilst they've got this spare time. Seeing what you've already got out there and just kind of redistributing that. Because again, that was like a year or two years ago, maybe. I could put mm. that out today. And as long as I've chopped the relevant parts you know, of it, I can put it out today. And um, I always like to do the maths on, on, um, on um, video, short form videos and stuff. It's like, I could, on YouTube, I watch one two hour interview or podcast and... I could watch that for two hours. But when you go on somewhere like TikTok, let's, let's just, just, just assume the average video is 60 seconds. If I watched 60, 60 second videos, that's an hour. 
right? That's an hour of content I've just watched. Did you, did I just, did you just hear me? I said I watched 61 minute videos. Yeah. That's ridiculous. 60 yeah. videos. Whereas if I just go on YouTube, I watch a two hour video a day or I watch four 20 minute videos and that equal like two, three hours. That's four videos. But yeah. the content was rich and I was engaged and I left a comment and I loved what they were saying and I learned and I want to see more of their content. But if I watch 61 minute videos on TikTok or Instagram, I can't remember the first video I watched. Yeah. 60 minutes ago, that was one minute. There's, there's yeah. no connection. There's no way to connect to that person because it's just, it's just way too much. And again, 60 videos or 100, it's just it's crazy. Like your brain has been bombarded with 60 different pieces of information from 60 <laughs> different people, 60 different profiles and 60 different agendas. It just doesn't make sense. It's and not great. It's not great. It's not great for your mental. It's just, it's just not great even for you as a creator because no one's going to remember you. And now no. you're seeing everyone turn into a comedian and slash actor because they're trying to be funny because they're trying to get people to engage with them. And it's just like, oh, they've got there's us on a this. Lot. this. They're this on treadmill. the treadmill. They're on the treadmill and, and there's treadmill. a lot of competition these yeah. days. So yeah. we, we have covered so much, Brian, yeah. <laughs> in the last hour. I, I really thoroughly enjoyed chatting with you. But if there is one sort of, key takeaway that a creative can have from from this conversation if if they're kind of like a little bit lost like many of us are on social media kind of think what's the point should I start doing more self-promotion all the rest of it what would be like a kind of you know bit of advice you would give especially now in 2023 oh well I would definitely say keep posting I think the Everyone asks me this type of question. I'm like, the answer to what should I do? Because this isn't working. It's just keep keep creating. And that's why my 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 phrase right now is like create more. Or it's really fear less, create more. It's like, don't be scared that you're gonna get no one looking at it. Don't be scared that you're gonna get zero likes or whatever it is, or people are ignoring you. Somebody is going to see you. I don't get, I don't have 10 million followers. I don't get super high engagement. My stuff never goes viral. But guess what? Katie called DM'd me for this podcast. And this is an opportunity for me to now talk to let other people hear about me. So I think for the main point is keep focused on what you want out of it. And don't worry about how much vanity, or how much followers you've got, how much engagement you're actually getting. Just keep posting because you know, okay, I want to connect with people. So I'm going to keep posting. And one day someone's going to see me, I'm going to reply and I'm going to be a part of the community um, because I keep posting. Like you have a voice, you have a gift, you have a talent. Just keep creating, keep posting because the right person will see it and the right person is waiting for an opportun- the, the time to give you that opportunity. Um, everything I've gotten or every opportunity I've gotten in the last five years is simply because I posted. I don't have high engagement. I don't have even 10,000 followers on any one platform, but you can see that I've worked with loads and loads of loads of companies simply because, oh, he's saying something and he keeps saying it and he likes saying it. So I guess we can call him to say it more in, in our space. So I would say just create more and don't worry about all the rest of it because as long as you keep creating and keep putting yourself out there the rest of it will happen the rest of it will come along well thank you so much for your time brian no thank you for your time thank you to brian hollingsworth for joining us this week to learn more about anything we've covered visit our show notes at creativeboom.com forward slash podcast Next time, we'll chat with Radim Malinic, creative director, graphic designer, and author of two new books, Creativity for Sale and Mindful Creative. Taking all of these learned from running his own studio brand new for nearly two decades, these new titles are full of honest advice and wisdom. And so we'll be delving into his own experiences, all the mistakes and triumphs and bumps in the road to help you become a successful creative. If you haven't already, please subscribe via any of the usual channels. And every Monday, you'll get conversations with creatives that will help you build a booming creative career. See you next week.